welcome everyone to this month's episode of Recovery Rockstar. My name is Melinda White. I am a person in long-term recovery. What that means to me is that I have not had to use a mood or mind-altering substance since December 28, 2011. When I continue to reflect on what it took for me to get into recovery, the blessings I found by being in recovery, and the amazing people that I get to be connected with as a result of being in recovery, I stay grateful. And I was always ta taught that a grateful heart will never pick up again. So I'm super uh, appreciative to have this show up and running today. Our show's gonna look a little bit different. I am going to be talking to two individuals instead of one. We are, are going to touch on the fact that they are also people in recovery. And excitingly, we are going to highlight one of the, I think the best holidays days um, in the year, which is recovery day at the state house. Due to the pandemic, which has been catastrophic in so many ways, one of the blessings that have come from it are that we can attend different events virtually, regardless of where you're located. I do believe that there have historically been a lot of people that haven't been able to make it to Montpelier on this day for whatever reason. And thank God you're going to have the opportunity to this year. I also want to continue to highlight and plug Narcan, Naloxone, the overdose kits. Um, those are extremely important for individuals to have their hands on through the Vermont Department of Health. Not only can people access the Narcan, Naloxone overdose kits, but they can also access what we call HRPs, which stands for harm reduction packs. Those packs have continued to be, to be improved upon and built where they include everything from sanit sanitizers to gloves to lip balm, protective lip balm. There are a number of different resources and phone numbers for individuals that need help. Um, so I strongly encourage people to reach out to your local health department. And more than anything, I continue to plug that we have 12 recovery centers in the state of Vermont. Uh, Vermont is one of the most blessed states to have these in each county. Those recovery centers can direct people for a resource and referral if they're in need of treatment and recovery services, not only for themselves, but for family members. And that's a unique service that they provide. So I strongly encourage people to reach out to your recovery center and not to mention that the people there are also recovery rock stars. Mm -hmm. So in this month, as I said, we're going to be highlighting Recovery Day at the State House, which is an amazing event that happens in the state of Vermont. I have two wonderful guests that I'm going to introduce. I'm going to start with Peter Espenshade, who is the president of Vermont Association for Mental Health and Addiction Recovery, as well as for Recovery Vermont. And Peter is absolutely an amazing, energized, excited advocate for Recovery Day at the State House. He puts endless hours making the event as beautiful and organized as it is. And one of my favorite things about Peter is whenever I talk to him, I love recovery is what he says. <laughs> he was also on my Recovery Rockstar show last year, an amazing interview. So I would like to welcome Peter to the show. Oh, Hi, Peter. It, it's great to be here and thank you. As a, as a person in long-term recovery myself, I love the recovery community. And what my recovery means to me is I have the blessing to work with the thousands and thousands of Vermonters and family members and allies to move this uh, forward. People recover. And it's a, uh, it's a tough um, field to be in sometimes because we have lost some really beautiful people. And Recovery Day at the State House is about that strength-based part of this, which is the fact that we can do better and that it's possible for people to recover. And I'm just really uh, thrilled and honored and super happy to be here. So thank you. Thank you so much, Peter. It's so great to have you back on the show. And the next guest I'm going to introduce is an amazing man that I met very early on in my own recovery and attended various trainings and board retreats with. And I have no shame in admitting that when he would speak, I had an open ear and I was like a sponge because I heard the intelligence, the commitment, and the, the energy behind recovery, and to boot, the energy about how do we reach all people in need? How do we advocate for recovery? So he has been what I define as, you know, a teacher, a coach, and of course, a dear friend, and that is Peter Mallory. Peter Mallory is the vice president of VAMHAR, which is the Vermont Association for Mental Health and Addiction Recovery. He's in charge of governmental relations and advocacy. And then he's also the board chair for the Vermont, Vermont 
Alliance for Recovery Residences, which is VTAR. It's very challenging to avoid those acronyms. Um, and I'm also on the board of directors of VTAR as well. So Peter and I get to share that as well, but he is uh, the board chair. So Peter, thank you. This is your first time coming on Recovery Rockstar. I'm so grateful that you're here and please tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you, Melinda, and thank you for all your service in so many different ways. Um, I'm delighted to be here. I'm a person in long-term recovery, which means I have not had to use a to drink or a drug since September 5th, 2005. Yay. And um, recovery is, is, is the biggest piece of my life now. And it's a miracle and it makes my life second to none. And the work I do is part of that recovery and getting to work with people like you, Peter, um, is the joy of my life. Um, and the advocacy piece and the government relations, we're always trying to build our relationships in government and uh, always fighting for some funding. That's part of what we do. And uh, as far as advocacy, um, I'm always trying to help people learn how to reach out and tell their story and our story. And uh, Recovery Day is one of the ways that we do that. And I guess we'll talk about that more. Thank you, Melinda. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Peter. I feel truly blessed to have you both on the show today. Uh, so one of the first questions that I'd like to ask, and I'm gonna direct this towards Peter Espenshade. Can you tell us first off, when is Recovery Day at the State House? Great, yeah, Re Recovery Day at the State House this year is going to be on Wednesday, February 17th from nine in the morning until two in the afternoon. We're gonna be on Zoom this year. The uh, link is going to be right here on your screen a couple of times. Go to recoveryvermont.org you can come for, you know, for just the first part or the last part or for some of it or for all of it. But we really hope that all Vermonters, not just folks in recovery, but that all Vermonters come join us to learn about the, the hope and the promise of recovery. We're in the, the middle of a pandemic that we know of, COVID, and we're in the middle of an epidemic that we don't want to ever lose sight of, which is the substance use disorder epidemic in Vermont. And we want to talk about the solutions and the hope that comes out of that. So we really hope folks are gonna join us on Wednesday, February 17th from nine to two on Zoom. And it ends up being a really heartwarming, beautiful day as we hear um, the story of dozens and dozens of Vermonters and their own recovery and the impact on their own families and their own communities. Thank you so much, Peter. And when you were saying we're really hoping people in the state of Vermont make it, it reminded me of a meeting I was in yesterday. As you know, I work with the Phoenix House of New England and I'm in the outpatient spoke, which is the Phoenix House Health and Recovery Solutions. And we have a number of RISE programs, which are the residential programs across New England. So not just in the state of Vermont, but across New England. And in a, in a meeting yesterday, one of our um, leadership individuals had said that it is on the schedules of the, the patients to be able to partake and watch Recovery Day at the State House in the state of Vermont, even though they are in other states, like example in Exeter uh, and in New Hampshire. So it's it truly is a gift that the accessibility to Recovery Day at the State House is going to be so easy for people that they can participate regardless of where they are on the map. Um, and now I'm going to ask you again, Peter Espenshade, what exactly is Recovery Day at the State House? Yeah, it's a it, it's a day. You know, we we like to say that every day is Recovery Day uh, for folks uh, in recovery and their their families and communities. But this is one special day when the entire state focuses on the power of recovery. So we will be starting at nine in the morning on Zoom. We will be hearing from political VIPs. We will be hearing from VIPs in the recovery community. We have awards. We will be looking at uh, some very brief little video snippets. 
We have the Writers for Recovery program, which is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen, um, where the writers from that program will be sharing their own poetry and prose and their own creative works around recovery. It is kind of this real, even though we're dealing with something that's a, uh, a healthcare issue and a healthcare crisis with substance use disorder, we have to put the lens on what positive can come out of this. And we do that in many, many, many ways from political leadership uh, to poetry to awards. And if and when you come on February 17th, just your soul and your heart are just going to expand with this sense of, of hope and of promise that um, we can work together to make the world a better place and to care for each other. Thank you, Peter. And what is your role in Recovery Day at the State House? Well, are we going to see you there? Well, you are going to see me. <laughs> I, I love it because it's, uh, it's not about me. I have that great joy of being able to welcome people up onto the stage to, it may be the governor um, sharing his own commitment to recovery. He's been very strong with recovery. The great folks at the Department of Health, all of these people, I get to bring up to the stage and, and shine a light on them. And one thing I'm really excited about uh, with this year's Recovery Day is, you know, as, as you mentioned, we used to bring everybody to Montpelier. And Vermont's a small state, but it's a big state. It's hard to come from Island Pond to Montpelier during a work day. What's great about this is we're bringing Montpelier to all of Vermont. And in the afternoon, I'm really excited from 1230 to about two, we are going to take our Zoom camera and visit each of the 12 recovery centers throughout Vermont, see the great things that are happening in local communities with these, uh, with our turning points and recovery centers that are just have just been godsends to their community. I really mean that. Mm -hmm. We're going to, to visit a recovery residence or two, which is a really exciting movement that I, I know both you and Peter Mallory have been real leaders in. And it, it shows the, the variety and the three dimensionality of how we're going about this, uh, this problem. And we're making a difference. And, and how great is it to, uh, to hear from people who are making a difference, who are tangibly making a difference in their communities, data starting to show it, and uh, who also have heartwarming stories as well. It's like the best of both possible worlds. I love that. And it makes me want to um, bring the camera to Peter Mallory to ask you a question, Peter, because we've heard a little bit about recovery residences. Can you give us a little brief history of what that looks like and especially specific to Vermont Alliance for Recovery Residences? Because I do know that that was taken from a national uh, movement to certify recovery residences. Can you give us just a little overview of what that world has looked like for you and what they are? Well, the Vermont Alliance for Recovery Residences started from a task force at VAMHAR, where we, we recognized the problem of uh, expanding the recovery residence movement and also certifying recovery residences so that we knew uh, that the ones who were certified were doing uh, this job well and safely for our folks in new recovery. And uh, there's a national alliance called the National Alliance for Recovery Residences, of course. And uh, we've become the Vermont affiliate of that. We've developed a, a system of standards so that we, we certify uh, homes all over the state. Um, and we are working hard to increase the uh, number of recovery residences. It's a challenge. Uh, it takes tremendous commitment for people to do this. This is not um, a money-making proposition as a general rule. So it takes more special people in recovery to, uh, to tackle these and make them work. But uh, I feel really proud of the work that we're doing and you're part of, Melinda. I also, not to talk about too many hats, but I'm president of the board of the Second Wind Foundation, which runs the turning point in White River. And 
Um, that's another window on, on recovery in the state. You mentioned it, Peter mentioned it. I'm so glad that this year on recovery day, we're gonna focus on those, res uh, not residences, on those centers as well and really travel around the state. And this is something we can do because it's virtual. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what we keep on board of virtual stuff once we don't have to do it all the time, which I hope is sooner rather than later, as we all know. Um, I will just mention this. Uh, we also help sponsor Mental Health Advocacy Day, which is Monday. And I just got an email while we're sitting here We've got 250 people wow. signed up by Zoom for that. So I'm hoping that we're going to see the same sort of numbers for Recovery Day. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you're doing this because Re Recovery Day is a tremendous celebration of recovery. And it's wonderful for people who aren't as familiar with uh, who we are and what we do. Uh, I find that when they join us, they are generally very moved by the story of recovery in Vermont. Thank you so much, Peter. Yeah, I can admit that I have not attended recovery day at the state house and kept a dry eye throughout the whole day. There are often more than two or three moments that bring people to tears of emotion and oftentimes gratitude to just realize what people can go through and yet where they can end up. I remember a few years ago, somebody who was on this show that I interviewed, Harley LaRock, he was one of my first recovery rock stars that I interviewed, had gone through the Vermont Foundation of Recovery Sober House program, went on to be a mentor, went on to be a staff, and he was sharing his experience at Recovery Day at the State House. And I, I mean, one of the cutest parts of his share was that for the first time in my life, I bought a toaster. Like I can afford a toaster, I can buy a toaster, I can use a toaster and before recovery, you know, so it just shows us like so many little things that can be taken for granted and yet getting into recovery, how we embrace every little miracle, the little things as small as getting your first toaster in recovery or your first checkbook. I also want to highlight because we did just talk about the recovery residences that you know, not only are we looking at a global pandemic that we are working to stay strong through, there's also been a huge housing crisis and now more so than ever. And for me, that's why I want to advocate for the recovery housing more than ever now, because we have people who need help with their addiction, get into recovery. And if they don't have a safe place to live upon, especially if, pe if people are going to residential treatment, that next step is is key, like building a nice, smooth, solid bridge is key. And those yeah. recovery residences have been proven effective. So that's been a huge goal of mine throughout this year is that, um, you know, maybe I'm a little bit too ambitious about it, but I feel like there should not be an empty bed in a recovery residence, period. There are so many people struggling with homelessness, so many people struggling with recovery. And what a brilliant solution to both of those, those issues is to get into a recovery residence. So I'm extremely grateful, uh, Peter, for what you've done with getting VTAR up and running. And again, VTAR stands for Vermont Alliance for Recovery Residences. And then the role that you both do with VAMHAR, which I one more time will spell out is Vermont Association for Mental Health and Addiction Recovery. Um, and now, Peter, Mallory, I'm going to ask you another question. Can you tell me why Recovery Day is important? Sure. Why is it it's important? funny. I was just sitting here thinking about that. And, you know, one of my hats is advocacy. And I think that Recovery Day, which we've now been doing for what, about 10 years, Peter? Oh, is yeah. It more than that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, has been one of the major pieces in helping our legislators and other folks know about recovery and who we are and what we do. Uh, I have worked in the state house in one way or another for 30 years. And if you asked me 10 years ago, uh, how many people knew the word recovery in the context that we mean it in government, uh, it was minuscule. And now thanks to things like recovery day, uh, that's changed dramatically. Um, I wouldn't guess the percentage of legislators, but it's certainly 60%, maybe more, who now have some idea what recovery is about. 
and uh, that's that's invaluable for us. And so Recovery Day is a great tool for advocacy, and it's a great celebration. Peter was talking about this earlier. It's a great celebration, um, and uh, it's uh, you're right about the tearful moments, but it's a joyous celebration overall and very powerful. Yeah. So that's why I think it's important. And again, I hope that this virtual challenge will reach even more people than usual. So. I love it. Thank you so much, Peter. And now Peter Esmanshade, I'm gonna to turn to you and ask you the same question. Why is Recovery Day important to you and in your perspective? Yeah, I think it's important because in, in Vermont, we're going to be, we are, and are going to continue to be running into a really good problem, but it's still a problem. The problem is every year, thousands and thousands of Vermonters are entering into recovery. Um, nobody wants to suffer from substance use disorder. And we have more and more folks who are really working to improve their lives and enter into recovery. If they are entering into a void, if they are entering into a world where there's not strong recovery supports, mm -hmm. then we're gonna be letting uh, those folks down. Then we're gonna be costing the state a lot of money. Then we're just gonna be seeing a churn. Investing in recovery supports that connect people and that keep people happy and healthy and supported in their recovery is just one of the very best things we can do morally, financially, personally, for our communities, for our workforce, for our economic development, for our neighborhoods, for all of it. We, we often say, you know, the opposite of addiction is connection. And what we are looking for are for those incredibly affordable supports so that folks who are in recovery can continue to work on their cover, their recovery for what that means to them and just to kind of re-enter and re-energize themselves into our communities, economy, families, et cetera. So it's really, really important. I think it's a good problem to have that we have so many Vermonters who want to enter into recovery, who are entering into recovery, and we just want to make sure we have our superb recovery centers as strong as possible. We want recovery friendly workplaces. We want these great recovery residences. that are some of the most phenomenal places you've seen. You need a place to live that's connected and safe and productive. And we're, we're working on those, we're building on those. And I can't, I really can't think of, of a better investment for philanthropic dollars, state dollars, and for our own um, volunteership than recovery. Yeah, if I can, if, if I can add to that a little bit, I agree with everything Peter just said. Uh, and, and I always try to sell this to legislators in particular, I mean, not to trivialize, but it's like mom and apple pie. This just makes sense. Mom yeah. and apple pie is yummy, but this makes sense. Uh, and it makes sense financially. The return on investment in recovery uh, is immense. I would also point out uh, that the pandemic, which we haven't really talked about, is going to is going to produce already a challenge, but it's going to become an even greater challenge as we come out of it for mental health and the use of alcohol is up by about 40%. So we're gonna see a real challenge as we come out of this pandemic and we need to make that point and look for the support that's gonna be necessary to meet that challenge. Thank you, Peter. I so appreciate that you highlighted that. I was also thinking here, uh, another thing that I would like to highlight on this show, and I know that I spoke with Peter Espenshade when we had done our interview last year, but you know, there, one resource that I tend to love more than almost any other resource in the world are recovery coaches. And mm -hmm. I know that this week there is another recovery coach academy 
Um, that was something I was blessed to have gone through years ago, learned so much. And I have to say, probably one of the most valuable things I learned was to keep an eye on, on bias, because it's very easy for people who have their own path to recovery to feel like this is the way. Well, right. it was the way for me, but that doesn't mean it's the way for everybody else. And right. that, that Recovery Coach Academy is so valuable to be able to look at the different perspectives, the different options, which there are so many paths to recovery, as we know, and there is not a single path that is wrong if it's working for somebody. So our goal as recovery coaches are to you know edify and cheerlead and motivate individuals to find that next step and to find their path. And Peter Espenshade, I'm going to ask you, because I know that this is something that you teach. Um, mm -hmm. When is the next recovery recovery coach academy? Am I correct in thinking there might even already be one going on? Yeah, the, so so there's a recovery coach academy going on uh, this week. We have eight more of them um, coming up throughout the year. We again, I think I'm going to put the link on the screen for you. And thank you for highlighting the the recovery workforce. You know, because of stigma around addiction and recovery, we didn't. Uh, we had a recovery workforce, but it was sort of underground. We were all supporting each other the best we mm -hmm. could. And now I'm so thrilled in Vermont. We have a recovery coach academy and we have a certified workforce, recovery workforce that's practicing evidence-based practices and that is providing um, life growing and life saving supports to so many Vermonters. So if you want to learn more about recovery, recovery coaching. If you'd like a recovery coach, please, please come to our website or visit your local recovery center. You can just give them a call and they will hook you up with your own coach who is not there to tell you what to do, who's there to listen to you and to support your own recovery in a proven evidence-based way. It's been a huge innovation for the recovery movement and it's really, uh, really taken off here in the state of Vermont. We're lucky to live here. Yeah, it's uh, mostly under the umbrella of Recovery Vermont and Peter has been a tremendous leader in uh, building this in Vermont. I think we're in the lead on recovery centers. I think we're in the lead on training recovery coaches nationally. And uh, I'm proud to be able with my role to go to the legislature and go to other places and talk about what we're doing and what a difference it's making. So thank you, Peter, for your leadership specifically in that area. Well, it's it's fun and it's fun being be, being with you too. All three of us are, <laughs> are are active in the recovery coach movement, and it's really a beautiful. It's just a beautiful thing. There's no other way to describe it. Well, I just can't thank you both enough. This has been amazing. I feel like I could just interview you guys for hours and hours and hours, but we are out of time. So I want to encourage anybody listening once again to participate in Recovery Day at the State House, to contact your local recovery center for resources and referral information, to know that there is a solution, that you're not alone, and that more than anything, that there is hope. So again, I thank everybody for watching. I thank my two phenomenal guests for participating. And I wanna thank all of you for continuing to give us an opportunity to highlight and celebrate recovery. See you guys next time on Recovery Rockstar.